Hi guys, welcome back to Edgewit channel. So today we will be continuing our veterinary surgery and radiology portions. So we will be discussing a very important topic that is wounds. So we will be discussing wounds as three parts. So we will be dividing the main contents into three and we will be dealing it in separate video. So if you haven't subscribed this channel yet, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell button for more updates. So in this video, we will be mainly having the introduction or the definition part, the classification of wounds, the symptoms of wounds, and the factors which are affecting the wound healing. So we'll be directly moving to the video. So first and most important part that is definition. The wound is a break in the continuity of soft tissue caused by any trauma. So we are all familiar with the wound. And we have seen wound and we have experienced wound condition in ourselves. So this is actually a wound. So wounds may be broadly classified into two categories. So what are all they? So wounds can be classified into closed wounds and open wounds. So this is the first basic classification of wounds. That is closed wounds and open wounds. So wounds classification. Closed wound and open wound. First of all, we can go to the closed wound section. So the first three that is contusion, bruise, and hematoma. So we are all familiar with the third word that is hematoma, and we have often seen uh, this in case of dogs that is ear hematoma, that is uh, tongue hematoma, etc. We have seen that. So next is the open wounds. So we have got twelve classifications that is incised wound lacerated wound, punctured wound, penetrating wound, perforating wound, gunshot wounds, abrasions, avulsions, aseptic wound, contaminated wounds, granulating wounds and ulcerating wounds. So we will be discussing the closed wound one by one. So the first one is contusion. A contusion is produced by blunt objects and results in damage to the subcutaneous tissue without breaking the continuity of the skin surface. So the breaking of the continuity of the soft tissue will not be there here. But a small hematoma like thing or hemorrhage under the subcutaneous tissue will be evident. So mainly it is happening due to the blunt objects that is muscle contusion is very common. So they are classified into first, second and third degrees according to the severity of the injury or extent of the injury. Next is actually bruise. A bruise is a mild degree contusion. So sometimes we often get confused with the word contusion and bruise. Bruise is a mild degree contusion. Even some people say that primary contusions are always called as bruise, etc. So it is characterized by rupture of capillaries in the skin giving rise to reddish blue or purplish coloration of the skin. However, due to coloration, uh, this type of uh, bruises are not appreciable in animals without because they are deeply pigmented skin and all. So next is hematoma. So this is very common. That is collection of blood in an abnormal cavity. It is due to injury uh, to a superficial vein. Hematomas are often frequently seen in the subcutaneous or submucosally. So the common seeds of hematoma in various species are. So in cow, we can see at a uh, mammary vein vaginal mucosal membrane etc. In bull, it's hematoma in involving in the penis that is injury during copulation. In horses, we'll be getting it in the sperm vein or external thoracic vein that is mainly due to the riding problems. Next is dog that is ear flap. Uh, even I have witnessed the ear flap hematoma. It's very common. And vaginal mucosal membrane that is actually during the copulation. So next is the open wound. We have got three type of classes in the closed wound and we are moving to the open wound section. So the first one is incised wound. Incised wound are caused by sharp cutting instruments such as knives, scalpels, fragments of glass, etc. So an incised wound tend to gape. The extent of gaping depends upon the elasticity and tension of the surrounding tissues. Next is lacerating wounds. A lacerated wound presents torn and uneven edges. So the chance of uh, secondary bacterial infection due to the underlying tissues as very common in lacerated wounds. Next is punctured wounds. This is actually caused by sharp pointed objects like nails. They have a relatively small opening but it can be very deep wound. 
the opening is inadequate for drainage and all so punctured wound on the foot due to gathered nail are example next is penetrating wounds that is actually stab wounds these are deep wounds communicating with the cavities like abdomen thorax and all due to the large structure of the stabbing object next is perforating wounds uh, it has got two openings one for the entrance and next for the exit so the term perforating wound and penetrating wound are often used synonymously but it has got some difference. next is gunshot wounds it has also got the entry site and exit site it may produce extensive damage and mainly due to firearms and gunshots next is abrasions that is actually abrasions are wounds in which the superficial layers of skin are removed and small small petechia will be present these are mainly finding in the operations or the accident injuries bike accident injuries and all next is avulsions uh, it's actually a loss of tissue that is mainly in avulsion of hoof avulsion of horn etc next is the aseptic wound so it is a surgical wound made under aseptic conditions where contamination is practically avoided so this is actually a septic wound produced in the animal but this is not a septic wound this is a septic wound it has got some bacterial infiltration and is it is going to start the formation of pus and all so we can call this as also contaminated wound. so contaminated wounds are actually in which the microorganisms are present that is it is also known as infected wounds or septic wounds contamination due to bacteria so whenever the bacteria is invading and they will start multiplying and they will be producing toxins and these toxins will act on the wound and they may produce discharge and pus collection a contaminated wound will become an infected and septic wound after a period of six to eight hours so next is the granulating wounds so a granulating wound is a wound that is showing tendency to heal ulcerating wound they will be showing no tendency to heal so moving to the symptoms of wound so the symptoms result from wounds may be described as local general and remote so the local symptoms include hemorrhage pain and gaping of the lips of the wound and phenomena of the repair which is happening at the local area next is general so if at all the wound is very big and it is producing some febrile disturbances many bacteria will be coming and the infecting organism will be producing virulence and pathogenesis and due to this we will be experiencing fever chills and all so this is actually coming under the general symptoms next is remote symptoms that it's actually observed on a part away from the wound for example abscess formation in dependent lymph plate paralysis or loss of sensation to a dependent part or neuritis extending along the course of nerve involved in the wound that is actually a remote symptom so next is the factors affecting wound healing so there are local factors which is uh, example the tissue vascularity the infection uh, frequency topical medications lavage and dressings presence of foreign bodies obliteration of dead space ionizing radiations movement and mutilations so the systemic factors which affect the wound healing are advanced age the nutrition the protein content the glucose content iron minerals like zinc copper vitamin a and b complex vitamin c carbohydrates the blood sugar level and all so thank you so stay tuned for the part 2 wounds